have you you know gotten home loan pre-approval i have and i'd say that's a good idea if you're going to go out looking for a place get your your uh your ducks in a row uh location of course location is huge uh is it close to infrastructures such as train stations or bus stops uh yes there are bus stops on that side of the beach where i am my, my the but like closest bus stop to me is about five minutes max from where i where i'm going to live by the looks of things if i was on the other side of cook highway you'd need a car there's nothing so it's chalk and cheese as far as that's concerned is it close to hospitals and schools it's close to school there's schools everywhere there's actually a, a language international language school and if i was finding i had problems with finances i could actually take in a student and uh, like Lynette's uh, going to do and um, they, they pay 300 bucks a week so it's a nice little earner uh, I don't want to have anybody sharing my place but if it if circumstances changed uh, maybe that could be done that could be because uh, there is a, a big college there the hospital is a fair distance it's about a half hour drive so that's the downside I can walk to the hospital where I am currently it takes me 25 minutes to walk up Lily Creek to the hospital. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that place well because I've done countless videos at that location. Is the neighbourhood safe? Yeah, I think that's an important question. I think uh, the beachside suburbs are very safe. They're very family orientated. I think I'd feel a lot safer walking around there after dark than I would here. I'll put it to you that way. So in a suburban area, not as it can be more dodgy. So and especially the CBD, I looked at the crime map, you can actually get a crime map of, of, of Cairns and check out each suburb. I'd suggest anyone looking for a house, if, you, if that's an issue for you, check it out. It gives you the all the different types of crimes and the level of crimes. And in the CBD, it's, it's bad news. So uh, just as a, an example, but uh, the beaches are quiet. They are damn quiet, and especially a place like Kawara Beach. So not an issue, not an issue there. Uh, is it reasonably quiet? Yeah, some would say it's too quiet. Yeah, I don't think noise is the issue there. Well, however, I will say that you need to probably go there at different times of the day and maybe knock on neighbours' doors just get a bit of intel. Uh, you can never tell because there could be noise, noise after hours. You just don't know. But I would say overall it's a very safe place to, to live as far as that's concerned. You'd be really stiff to have party animals next to you in uh, Kawara Beach. 70% of residents are owner occupiers, uh, only 30% are renters. So it, it's a, it makes it a lot quieter area. Uh, what are the local council regulations around uh, renovations or extensions? I've no idea because I'm not really, the only thing I've, I might want to do is build, is get a bigger shed, but I'll just cross that uh, bridge when I come to it. But, you know, it depends. If it's important to you, by all means, it's another consideration. Uh, is the exterior of the house in good condition, free from cracks uh, or defects? Again, this is why you have a building inspection. I'm a lay person, a, a blind lay person, so I'm not going to find all the defects. That's why it's imperative that someone, especially like me, gets a building and pest inspection done. I would only say skip that with a house if you have expertise in both of those areas. Otherwise, I think you'd be pretty silly not to, to, to fork out the money on that. Considering how much you're paying to buy the bloody house, I mean, it's, it's just a fraction. And uh, for peace of mind, and it could give you that negotiating edge to get a lower price. So remember that too. Um, is the roof in good condition? Well, again, you won't be able to see all of the roof, uh, but I guess you can have a Again, that's why you should have a building inspector. Presumably, they'll they'll be go through it with a fine tooth comb. Are the windows and doors in good condition? Do they open and close? And are there locks on them? And for insurance purposes, it's probably a good idea just to check that out because when you've got to do your insurance quote, they're going to ask you a lot of these crappy questions that you won't know anything about unless you've done a checklist like this. Um, and just for security, anyway. I mean, it's just it, I'm I'm on. That's one thing I don't have to worry about here. I'm on the top floor. Uh, of a small block of flats and we've got security gates out the front. So my security here is very good. That's one issue I don't have with this flat. Uh, but in, a, in a, a normal suburban house, it becomes an issue again. Now, are the gutters and downpipes in good condition? Well, again, just have a, a cursory look, but again, the, the building guys should do that. 
Uh, is the property connected to electricity and sewer? Well, they all are these days, unless you're up in whoop whoop, I'd imagine. That, that's, uh, that's a given. Uh, you won't have outside dunnies, that's for sure. Uh, does the land provide, not, not, where, not where I'm specifically talking anyway, does the land provide sufficient space for additions? Yeah, that's not an issue in my case. It's the last of my worries. I've got, it's, it's gigantic. It's, like I say, most people my age are downsizing. I'm upsizing, Mr. Contrarian. Now, is the property fenced? Yes, it is. And is the fencing in good condition? To be honest, I can't say how good a condition it's in, but uh, that's something I will have to check up on. And yes, it's worth doing because it's an additional cost and what have you. And if there's security issues there, you, I guess you can get, then again mention it to the owners and sort of negotiate something, maybe about the, the price, who knows. Are the walls in good condition, free from uh, holes or cracks? Well, they're not in this place. They're, they're, I've seen, I saw there's some discolorations in a couple of the uh, the other bedrooms. The, the the master bedroom looks okay. Very tired looking though. The whole thing needs a design revamp uh, and needs a sprucing up. But uh, as far as major damage like that, I don't have that issue. But you, you know, you'd be crazy not to, you know, be be thorough with your inspections. Don't uh, if you're really interested in the place. Spend the time, I, I suggest. Is there any sign of mould or damp? Well, that's something I, I didn't specifically go and check out. I didn't smell any bad smells. I, um, they, of course, most of the agents now will put on the, the, the ceiling fans. That's a, that's a given and turn on air con and turn on the lights. So uh, that's, they stand, that's a standard practice for them. And that, and that would actually blanket any of that stuff too. But no, I didn't notice anything bad that way. But it had been knocked about a bit, so... Yeah, like I said, there was discolorations and things like that. Uh, the floor's leveled and undamaged. This one's built on a, uh, a concrete slab from what I can gather, so that shouldn't even be an issue. But again, building inspector stuff. Are uh, there sufficient power points? Well, anyone can check that. That's one you should check. I didn't. I only saw took notice of the ones in the lounge. There were a number there. And of course, internet is vital. Uh, there is, I asked today, there is an NBN connection box in there. Uh, it, you just got to ask these basic questions. They may sound silly, but uh, internet, good internet connection for me is vital. So, uh, yeah. Uh, all lights switch on and off. Don't be afraid to go flicking switches, opening cupboard doors, going through the place with a fine tooth comb just to check it. Uh, no broken light bulbs. Yeah, again, just attention to detail. I'm lousy at attention to detail, so this list is probably good for me. And when I do this next inspection, I will be going through with a top fine tooth comb. Uh, good water pressure. I didn't check, and I should have. Uh, that's another thing it's easy to do. Is all the plumbing in good working order? Hot water in all taps? Something you can easily check. Hot water system in good condition? Is it on the fritz or... Again, it's just a negotiating thing, but I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's worth checking. Number of bedrooms, including separate toilets. Well, there's two lots of toilets here. They're, I've got an ensuite toilet and an additional toilet. And that's, that's perfect for me because I'm at a time of life that uh, using the toilet is something you do more frequently, unfortunately. It's just one of those joys of old age. And... Uh, and uh, so that's just basically not a, a luxury, that's a, a necessity for me. So if I've got guests over, they've got their own toilet to share and that, that works for me. So I've got a couple of friends who want to come up here in June and uh, I think they'll love it, uh, love the area and uh, they'll have a ball, but uh, uh, that's a practical thing that I need. So I've got myself an ensuite, so that's perfect. Um, now, and this one, this is one I've got in this place is roof insulation. Uh, you may, it does, it's not glamorous, you can't really show it, but I'll tell you what, it's worth having up here, especially for the summers. I think uh, it made my summer here much more pleasant because I had insulation in the roof. I also get cross ventilation, which I won't get as much of because uh, I'm not elevated there, it's on ground level, although we are near the beach, so hopefully we're getting a, a bit of a beach breeze as well. So. That's to be found out. Uh, yeah, so you discovered basically. What appliances and furnishes and furnishings are included in the contract, and are they in working order? Uh, in my case, there's nothing. Basically, the only thing is they've got some uh, some of those wooden uh, Venetians, and I quite like them. They look quite nice, but I'm going to need to buy some curtains and things. It's a drag, but at least I'll get what I want. 
Uh, I've got I've bought curtains for here and and they're staying, so that's okay. Working oven and range. Yeah, that the, the uh, I don't even know again whether that the the electric oven there does work or the range. Um, it's crappy and needs to be replaced, so it'll only be a short-term problem anyway. Uh, I do intend to buy a barbecue, so I'm going to have so much space outside. And um, but it's not. A, it, look, it, it's something you should check. I bought a new oven here. The old one looked like crap. Uh, it's you can get them pretty cheap, and Harvey Norman will actually do the installation, take away the old old one. Other retailers probably do the same thing, so. Uh, check it out. Don't be afraid to do that if you need to. Uh, nothing worse than having a crappy, crappy appliances in the kitchen, I think. Because uh, I do cook uh, at home a lot, all the time. So for me, it's a big deal. Um, contract and title. Well, that again, that you get yourself, make sure you've got a decent solicitor or conveyancer. Condition of stairs at multi-storey. That's obvious. Uh, is the title free from currency? Well, we've mentioned it before. Does the contract contain any special conditions? Uh, what happens in the case of a delayed settlement? Well, I can tell you what happens. You bloody sweat and you get nervous and you don't enjoy it. And that's exactly what's happened to me because the finances on this place have dragged on the finalisation of them. Tomorrow's supposedly the deadline. It better happen because I'm going to be really pissed off if this sale falls through on my place. Uh, it shouldn't, but I cannot rest peacefully until I get the official okay from the financial institution that the uh, the buyer's been dealing with. It's just bad luck. Normally this isn't such a hassle. It's usually resolved after about three weeks after you've signed the contract. It's probably about, in my case, it's about four weeks and we still haven't got there. So it's, yeah, it's not ha I'm not happy. Uh, the neighbor, neighboring property is well kept. In the, yeah, well, in my pl place, they are. In, uh, in Kiwara Beach, there's, there's upmarket areas and there's downmarket because I'm closer to the beach. The te you, find, you tend to find that places are looked after a bit better. So that's an advantage apart from having access to the beach. You also tend to get into, into an area where the properties are looked after a bit, a bit better, in my opinion. Um, is there a pool fence? If there's a pool, yeah, of course that's an important. It's, it's a legal uh, requirement anyway. Smells, we well, don't. Yeah, again, uh, if you, something smells bad, you know, ask about what's going on. Uh, is there anything masking potential smells? Candles, uh, potpourri, fresh cookies. Does the house smell damp? Um, do the closets smell musty? Again, another reason to open up doors and, and closets. Uh, does it smell burnt when you switch at any power points? Well, it'd have to be pretty crook if that's happening. Uh, is the road noisy? That's a good one. This is actually just before a cul-de-sac. There's about, I counted how many houses in the actual cul-de-sac, six. So there's no, that's the only traffic I'd encounter. And that's if they go down my street, there's an alternate way they can go as well. So there shouldn't be much traffic at all. It should be damn quiet. Can you hear the neighbors? I doubt it. I don't think it is. It's a, it's a big block, and that's the other advantage of having a big block. It might be high maintenance, but it also provides a buffer. Uh, are there any animals you can hear? Dogs, of course. Is there construction work nearby? No, and hopefully I won't be hearing industrial bins being empty as I do here. Uh, is the house under a flight path? That's a very good question. Uh, there, there are flights over um, Trinity and uh, and Kuwara, but they're they're fairly elevated at that point. I noticed at Yorkie's Mob, they did a turn right over the beach, and it was much lower to the ground. So it's more of an issue at Yorkie's than it is at Trinity Beach or at Kuwara Beach. So yes, it's an important question, and I do get them here too. Uh, but you do get used to them if you are you do have a few planes going overhead. When I actually bought this place, just after an inspection, there was a military plane that virtually went, it was only a few feet above the bloody uh, the roof line here. That that freaked me out. That re I actually, I sent an email to the Defence Force over that because I thought that was ridiculous. But there's only so much you can see when inspecting a property. It's a good idea to get a building and pest report done by a professional who can check for major issues such as termite activity, structural issues and damp. Couldn't agree more. Good advice. Uh, so that's basically it. Um, 
I've probably gone on quite a long time here. I haven't bored the pants off you. Uh, this is not trivial stuff. If you're buying a place, you really do need to uh, to be businesslike about it so you just avoid a few of these pitfalls. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great.